So, um, welcome to yet another reading here in Bay Area. Uh, <laughs> what can I say? Um, just to give an introduction to the space. With, yeah, there's uh, lots of cleaners who are just coming back from a protest at the Royal Oxford House. Yeah. I should begin by plugging that. Yeah. There are six cleaners who have been uh, fired from Royal Opera House uh, who, uh, like a few weeks ago, um, and they've been fired mainly because the cleaners have just got living wage there and uh, now the management have decided to try and get rid of all the people who are organising in the union. So at the moment there is a protest every night at 7 to 7.30 so like just the performances are about to start at Royal Opera House, so yeah, if you like find yourself in the middle of town or want to go and support some workers who are being like bullied and hired to organise them, then please go down there. So they're doing at the moment. Um, I know everyone like quite a lot of people here have been on strike for the last month, so I don't know, maybe you've like got extra energy, maybe you've got depleted energy, mm -hmm. but like <laughs> Yeah, please go and help them. Um, <coughs> also in the building here, so if you ever want to help out, like their campaign there on the top floor here. Uh, we're uh, sort of resource space, archive, uh, social space, and organising and self education space for uh, people who like to break things and who are interested <laughs> in uh, transforming the world or making uh, decisions into its uh, yeah, approved edifices. In, edifices uh, and so we do have like screenings and poetry readings and also these spaces can be booked for like no cost to radical activists and self-organizing and self-education groups uh, we're also an active archive and we're collecting materials from the 60s to the present so if you've been involved in any uh, like social movements or have archives from social movements that need a home then come and speak to me about it or if you're interested in booking spaces or running events here or having meetings here then just by saying to me or get in touch on our website um, that's pretty much all there is to say about this place I'm hand over to David who's done most of the organising for tonight uh, so we're just going to have the two readings with no interval or anything, and um, <laughs> Sam will tell you about this, but Sam is going to pass around a hat mm -hmm. to raise money. I'll leave that to Sam. Cool. Uh, so we're going to begin with Sam Solomon, and then we're going to have Lisa Yeshko. Uh, so Sam Solomon is director of the Center for Sexual Dissidents at the University of Sussex, where he's been on stroke. He is one of the translators of the poetry of Celia Dropkin, and his book on socialist feminism and British poetry is coming out from Bloomsbury later this year, and it includes work on Denise Riley, Wendy Mulford, Veronica Forrest Thompson. It's a vital work on these neglected histories. The combination of attention to the materiality of language and the intersections of radical politics is one that carries over into his poetry. A special subcommittee just recently came out from Commune and collects several years of work, including his previous pamphlet, Life of Riley, which was published by Bayard Press a few years ago now, alongside the poems that gave the book its title. These poems use language taken from official records, FBI files, and anti-communist congressional hearings, forcing it to register what is hidden in the plain sight of mendacious public language, shooting it through with a lyric voice, sentimentally, unsentimentally concerned with family, friends, love, queer desire, and the hatred of capitalism. It is beautiful and necessary. Sam Solomon. I'll speak louder in a second. I'm just starting a timer. Um, so yeah, but there's a hat. And if you want to put some money in it, it would be for a group that I'm with called Unis Resist Border Controls. Um, it's basically a collective of British EU, non-EU, migrant students, lecturers, staff at universities who are opposed to the um, basically visa and immigration, UKVI, surveillance um, on university campuses. Um, some of what we do is just kind of like point people to resources, but also kind of try to educate about what's going on in different campuses, how the hostile environment um, 
is in place, how it's enforced, and try to gather data. We're doing the best we can about how that works, but it's entirely volunteer based, um, so any money that can help. Um, and, and in some cases, some of the members are sort of precarious migrants who can't travel to give the workshops unless they have some money to help them out. Um, so anyway, I have some little things with info on them. And also, I'll put those in the hat um, and just pass it around. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can take one of those even if you don't put money in the hat. Um, I'll just pass that around, do whatever you will. But also, I have some copies of my book. And um, if you donate something to that, you can maybe take one of the copies of the book. I think that's the, the way I would do that. Um, oh yeah. We can do that later, that's okay. But yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to read some things from the book. But first, um, something else that I wrote that's called, more recently, um, called Meeting Room. I'm not really sure what it is, but... Uh, Virtuose, pre-summer, getting ready for some meetings. Traveling the world and leaving a wake of broken hearts. Tingling, turning red, feeling something in the abdomen contract over gaseous bloat. That's my body, moving stuff around this meat sack. Lucky in travel and happy to arrive. Happy. Put it down, put it away. That work stuff, I mean. Put it all away. Now, put it back together. Collage it. Don't worry about it. No matter. <coughs> Collage is a precondition for survival and leaves frayed linen edges. Where is Britain? Where are Jews? Was my grandmother Polish? Was my other grandmother Polish? Or maybe Ukrainian? For how long? The border moved. I don't know. They're pretending the border won't move again. They're even pretending that indifference to the border is the same as disinterest in the border. I want us to be interested. We are interested in different things made up of some of the same things in minimally patterned shapes. At the meeting, too. A meeting might take the forms of other things we do and not tell us that it does. It may or it may not be a hostile environment. That's what makes it a hostile environment. Before the meeting, I'm in the vestibule, becoming an accidental expert at noticing myself, having never really stretched my vocal cords, having avoided the deepest frequencies of my own voice production, barely vocalizing an inner shout. Anyway, we're all in the vestibule, just being vestibular. <laughs> Vestibulary? Watching and listening, waiting to become virtuosic at the meeting. Virtuosity is a pleasure because it refers to nothing. In the vestibule, we get to track the process by which a body goes from being an object of fear to being an object of pity. That's what will happen in the meeting when, as if by surprise, someone is not virtuosic. The discussion will keep on getting more technically advanced, and it will keep on getting more technically advanced until it becomes transparent to everyone. We may love what will attend us at the meeting. When we're virtuosic, we don't think about attendance. We just let it go. Though there's no shortage of enemies, and many are also in attendance. Okay, so move back, step back, move out, move along, travel. Stop reading when it's dark in the room or outside. Go somewhere brighter than Brighton. On the bench, on the beach. Be virtuosic there too. Make a monument to a living man, an arch, an arcade, a mausoleum. Plant some maple saplings around it, some edible trees. Um, so this book is named for a special subcommittee for um, 
the special subcommittee of the committee on education, well, it was, sorry, that's the bigger special subcommittee, and within that, the special subcommittee to investigate communism in New York City distributive trades. This is a um, special subcommittee of U.S. Congress that was, existed before the McCarthy era, just basically after the Taft-Hartley Act was passed. This was labor, labor legislation that was union busting, and particularly in response to the fact that black workers in the South were starting to organize unions and do so in conversation in a lot of cases with the Communist Party. Um, and um, JFK was on the subcommittee and um, they called my grandfather who was the president of local 830 retail and wholesale employees union in New York. They called him in um, because he was a communist but also because um, he basically had told his union and well, he hadn't, this is what's up for discussion. His members hadn't signed the non-communist affidavit that was required of them um, by this new legislation. Um, so he was questioned about this repeatedly. And I'll read a little bit of this, which has some of that testimony, um, and then some little things that I made from the testimony. Um, so there's this sort of questioner and my grandfather and then what I did. So, who were the speakers at this meeting? Well, there was myself as president of the union, and there were quite a number of rank and file workers right from the floor who took the floor and discussed the questions. Did you start off the subject of accepting this report? I made the report, and it included a number of items in addition to the question of bypassing the Taft Hartley board. But I discussed the question of our strikes, the need for our membership to recognize the obstacles being placed in our path by this anti-labor legislation, and the need for reaffirming, again, the decisions made at previous meetings to go ahead and try to secure our conditions and benefits without reliance in any manner, shape, or form on the Taft-Hartley law, that in the event the law was used against us, we would exercise all of our legal rights and remedies. Mr. Solomon, I asked if you made a speech, I didn't ask you to give it. I will ask you one part of that speech. You did explain to them in the course of your speech why they shouldn't require the leadership to file the non-communist affidavit. That's correct, sir. File affidavit for the report board. This is total admin people. Strike items from speech, rights from legal meetings, claim items for law, strike didactic anti-labor time is stricken. Court reporters for the aristocracy of labor want us to know the difference between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. Between straight time and overtime is the real opposite of straight time, not queer time, but alien physics. If you work part-time, you cannot be excused from service, right? You can't be most emphatic about everything, not just that you don't want to work at all and labor time is a dead end. I will ask you, Mr. Solomon, whether or not you ever were or are you now a member of an organization known as the Trade Union Committee to Free Earl Broder. I wish to assert my constitutional prerogative in respect to the Fifth and First Amendments and any other constitutional provisions that might pertain thereto. And I order you to answer that question. I've answered it, sir. Mr. Solomon, I will ask you whether you ever have now or now, have you ever have been or now are a member of an organization known as the Citizens Committee to Defend Representative Government, which is an organization supporting the seating of the communist Gerson. I wish to again assert, sir, that my constitution, I wish to again assert my constitutional rights under the First and Fifth Amendments of the Constitution and answer that question so. I will ask you, have you ever been or now are a member of the Communist Party? I repeat my answer, sir, that I assert my constitutional rights concerning this question, and particularly the First and Fifth Amendments of the Constitution. I order you answer this last question, Mr. Solomon, as to whether or not you ever were at any time or now are a member of the Communist Party. Sir, I believe that you are infringing on my constitutional rights. I assert them, 
and I believe that these questions do not pertain in any manner, shape, or form to the investigation of my duties as an officer of our union. Just a minute, regardless <laughs> of their political belief. False analogy between patriarchy and state power is history. It's not resemblance, not always the world historical defeat of the female sex, but it also sometimes is just that that affects the answers we can give rights we've inherited and skipped over, dialectically re-engaged, some things are not surprising, but still the best response might be to strike <coughs> inheritance. Because males were less attached to the matriarchal gens, they began to notice their own property, and show it, so it should be no surprise to you that my originary myth ends in blacklist. Um, <coughs> two shorter things from here. <clears throat> this is called Pebble Mine. Butchy cutoffs, tough and tumbling, denim board shorts with no apparent port, facing into it, split lipped and sprung without pastor, pier and tower, wet sand cycling, rollers coast into the channel, down into a cluck, ducking rivers, sun developed, orange cone, vermilion cape hot pink shoelace too. If memory serves me not at all to unpack open conflict, my room just set up, waiting there for me to crawl back and have that there and not a home. My speaking matters some in scale, and solipsism's trail not bad but binned with crab meat bloated to mess up the need beyond my tail. Who cares what brought me here? brought here to a body broken by being a bridge. It becomes reusable, and I should never speak to anyone on a Thursday when it's like that squeeze of the hand, opened up to hug each part by touch alone. It can also be very simply, very simply not intense or shattering, like sex can. A fear was growing in my heart. The fear grew sharper drawn away to where there was no sun, but a sense of external accomplishment. Look what I burped into me. All that activity spruced out of a need I don't want to mine. Um, this is called Feelings for my friend Emma Haney. We're going to the party, why are all these people here? They're all different kinds of people. Wait, no, they're all the same. <laughs> we spent the day marching, and now we're at the bar. This bro needs a good neck punch, because he has no good ideas about how to get the speaker to the sound system. <laughs> I'm transported in front of it, I'm not sure how, and this banner is twisting everywhere because it has three different posts. I can't be bothered to explain, but it was really hard to carry, and we're trying to move fast among the other moving people. It's much simpler in the bar to cut vertically through your teeth with a laser than it is to beam the day back up. I'm relieved by some suspension, for I've often described these novelistic feelings, but never sought to change them. The last thing I wanted was to bring it to the bar, to explain it to nonpartisans who drink up our blood like Manhattans. They could have been there too. Or no, they couldn't. Emma, kick me in the pants again and tell me why I'm wrong. You wouldn't smile unless you meant it. I pick friends apart from others, and we just pick friends apart. All day you were becoming ferocious, but it wasn't a very good protest, and this is certainly not a good bar, and we're getting careless now, but talking, we're trying. You photograph yourself crying and open the little curtain and yell, hey, get in here, and I get it. I'm tired now, I'll rest my head on the last thing I want to tell you. I tell you by not telling. Waiting at the bar now, a small forward's all I am. But waiting at the curbside might just make the day stop leaving. And then there are these pieces called documents where I have my grandfather's FBI file. Basically, he got it from a Freedom of Information request. And it's really boring. That's the main feature of it. Um, and they're really bad at, um, at surveilling him. This is in the <laughs> 50s and 60s, and like he was in the Communist Party, but they keep trying to figure out if he was. It shouldn't be that hard to figure out. Um, so, yeah. Um, but 
but um, so I wanted to do something with that. Um, and I'll just jump in at little bits of what I wrote around this. So, a paper trail of nothing. The subject's neighbor advised the subject and his family are away for the summer, said she did not know where they were, but believed them to have rented a cottage in Rockaway, Queens, New York, and will probably return when the regular school semester begins. It is noted that the school semester begins approximately the second week in September, and since the present address of the subject is unknown, efforts to interview the subject will not be made until the second week in September, or until it is ascertained that the subject has returned to his permanent residence. A paper trail of nothing. What they'll show shows they have no idea what they're doing. I mean, really, how many pretext phone calls can you get shouted out of? I mean, it's noted that the school semester begins approximately the second week in September. Someone actually wrote that in the secret files of a government agency. <laughs> From now on, when I close my eyes, I'll know the provenance of each part and stick to that. It's like sheet music. But orchestration may no longer mean anything if we can just rush the stage. Now imagine the slaughter. Do you picture this like the symphony or like you're in a dark green vinyl lazy boy with your eyes closed? That's more vivid, but I can't make either for you. Um, skip a little bit forward. Uh, let's see what we've got here. 35, uh, no, I'll skip that. <laughs> <coughs> Although I will note that there's a part where they um, say that his height is between 5'6 six and 6 feet. That's the <laughs> um, precision that we're dealing with. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, the subject was contacted for interview by bureau agents on October 14, 54. The subject was quite hostile and refused to talk with the agents. From a review of the subject's case file, there's no reason to believe that the subject would cooperate with bureau agents at this time. Further, since he's in the printing business, it's possible that a contact with him could prove embarrassing to the bureau. <laughs> Therefore, no interview with the subject is recommended at this time. Um, who's never been on or in some special subcommittee? My family is another one, so an easy analogy frames the work. This family is congressional. A precarious form, this tendency, a fraction, faction, internal opposition, a wing, what whole does it express or conceal, or does it explode? Is the whole of Congress, then? Now I need another mind to synthesize mine, another you to get us off that island. You want me to say it all, every time, repeat every truth I've already shown. It's not that I still know it, not saying it, but I might want to do something else now. I'll bro it up at someone's house and find a man to get the best of me. Form another committee and then learn why men pull away. It would seep downward, not upward. Top-down metaphors are correct here. Into every interaction so that when they imagined their three minutes at the bullhorn, they couldn't decide if they were as ang angry about the useless interaction in the hallway with the coworker as they were about the direct impingement on civil liberties, as they were about the fact that they had to do this at all to work, as they were about the fact that they could perceive this as a choice, as they were about the fact that we are ecumenical in solidarities that remain cloistered, as they were about the fact that their anger could even possibly be a matter for contemplation, as they were about the utter irrelevance of their struggles against civility, as they were about the fact that their comforts were private, as they were about the fact that their intimacies are hidden, as they were about the possibility that they might be forced to be public instead, as they were about the fact that writers think they can produce meaning alone, as they were about the fact that they sometimes believed this, as they were about the fact that the rhythms of anger seem especially irreducible to description. The subject was contacted at his residence by special agents redacted and redacted. The subject appeared at the peephole in the door of his apartment. Before the agents could advise the subject the purpose of the contact, the subject said through the peephole, I know who you are, I have nothing to say. Special agent redacted identified the agents by showing his commission card to the subject through the peephole, while at the same time he was attempting to clarify the purpose of the contact. 
At this point, the subject closed the peephole and was heard to walk away from the door. <laughs> the interview was terminated at this point. <laughs> it is noted regarding the subject's attitude that he was quite hostile to the agents. <laughs> <laughs> One more of these. I'll read. I didn't know my paternal grandfather very well, which is to say that I still don't. I sometimes ask for stories about him, the same ones, filtered through my dad's love, anger, disappointment, self protection, and a sort of loyalty, though I'm not sure to what exactly. That's one strand in the history of racial formation. The family as committee might be a different one. A totally bureaucratic intimacy, since a truly democratic centralist organization of kinship would be a category error. A grouping of affinities would probably be two. These forms cross over and do not answer for each other or much else. And I can't even ask the questions that impel me, not even enough to fail. Fragments never fail, and collages won't cut it. A gay international that's not very international at all. I did, however, know my grandmother. The subject's wife, Betty Solomon, New York File 1076838, was recommended for interview. It's noted that the subject's wife, Betty Solomon, was interviewed on April 23rd, 54. She displayed a very hostile and uncooperative attitude, <laughs> advising that she would furnish no information to the FBI about anything. That sounds about right. Of course, she was a party member herself, but I don't have her file. So the patronymic reasserts its force. I repeat it. I am not, do not have, a wife. This is my inadequation. In both cases, there's a certain work of unknowing, attempt, attempting to generate some other knowledge through both my own cuts and the redactions of government documents supplemented by fragments of my life, my activities and passions, the worlds I inhabit, and those I would just like to inhabit. That's not an honest attempt at totality on the level of a psychological or social realism. This is also not the golden notebook for reasons of necessity and inadequacy. I have stories and I have some research skills and I also have an incomplete oral history conducted by my cousin. These don't really fill in gaps if we're being honest. I don't really want them filled in, I should say. I suture them with doctrinal leanings pressed in and out of shape by, well, form, understood here as the contingent forces of circumstance. The point was to write a set of mini essays on the family in order to document the cynical attachments that come from a fear of loneliness and understand how I have the capacity to cry from watching Homeland. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's a part of the file where special agent redacted gets in some trouble for his failure to submit a report about my grandfather's case. An explanation for this is requested by the higher ups and his scrambling excuse is printed right in the file. He claims that no one actually asked him to submit the report. Um, and the notes from his supervisor are also in the file, insisting that indeed his subordinate special agent redacted was personally instructed to proceed with the investigation of this case. There's a different kind of subject captured here, this agent on file, and I can hate him. <coughs> but I can also feel his shame. It still does its mammalian tingling. I'll stop there. Thanks. So now we're gonna have Lisa Yeshke. Um, Lisa Cole runs Materials Press with me, and also on her own runs the German sister branch, Materialien, <laughs> who have published a translation of Francis Crook's pen by Koch. No. She lives in Munich and commutes to Kiel, but as many of you know, lived here for a number of years before that. She'll be known to, I think, quite a few of you for her theatre work with Lucy Bayman, who's over there. <laughs> An astonishing series of pieces over the last few years, including David Cameron, the Theatre of Night Songs, uh, which is available over there. 
uh, and the tragedy of Theresa May, which is forthcoming from Tipped Press, and they're working on a new piece now, which is also a truly excellent poet. <coughs> Lisa is deeply attentive to the history of theatre, the history of language, the complicities and complexities of poetic figuration, the extreme moral impurity of a fierce and funny <laughs> and vital ethical commitment. Her first book, Dead Cheap, came out around four years ago and contains some astonishing pieces in poetry and prose with a characteristic combination of total rigor and complete obscenity. The anthology of poems by drunk women, the long-awaited follow-up, is coming out from the materials sometime soon. Here, a smiley face sits next to a guillotine, a German word next to an English one, should I or should I not marry Donald Trump? Where is Chelsea Manning? Casta Semania is the greatest 800 meter runner of the current era, fuck the RF day. This poetry is obsessive, funny and rude, dead serious and almost always right. I'm very pleased to welcome Lucy Wish. <laughs> From the anthology of poems of drunk women, Assimilating her with nature is simply a prejudice. Rather groped in Cologne than marry a man. That's my New Year's resolution. <laughs> yes, you heard right. Fucking suited AfD groom defending me with your might. Man of status, your soul up eaten by fear. Domestic acronym, make room. Hands off my country. Mm. Sentence poem. I am a woman and I need to eat. You're a trash. <laughs> On 25th of June 2016, walking through a London valley of great nature, thoughts wandering along with feet left, right, and center, I chanced upon the sight of a monstrous maiden bumhole singing. <laughs> Who she was clearly drunk, definitely from the EU, slurring. I was enchanted and I stopped <laughs> and listened to those subwaged iTunes streaming from her mouth light right into the low cost maintenance moldy tubular interiors of my ear cavities, in or out. And this is what she sung. <laughs> I want to drink with Boris, I want to drink with Nigel, I want to drown in the sea. <laughs> Me! They would get some beers, we would get the sea. <laughs> sea! I carried on, realizing it was me what was singing, bound by their election, sick of many others. Yeah, I was transported, channel and kilograms and stones of stones pocketed down, out. Asking me what my beef with Britain was, it was organic. Where we go to the main four became we buy our bodies one day rectum. Osmosis became spectacularly disastrous and shrinkage never good. Dying the crying organs percentage wiser bladder. <laughs> Should one commit suicide with a view to nothing but Arbeit work ahead? <laughs> You, my country doctor, Frau Petri, I do not want you to read uh, my teenage diaries. <laughs> if she does, she will know I have no genitals, none of any kind. <laughs> Did I? Huh? Frau Petri will be very angry. Horst Seehofer will say such a person cannot exist. Hoo -hoo. <laughs> Donald Trump will have me killed, but won't do it himself, will send someone, someone from the team. Team, <laughs> team, what dreams. Love negotiation tokens. No, now we will have passed. Dear England, Hobson, Jobson, Deadly, Hubby, Puffy, Iffy, Fifty, Supernovas. <laughs> Hunted, I, stone facial whore, time on the sleeves and shit woman man, assemble the teenage diaries to hide them before they get me. Run outside and yet inside. Got the choice. The hill where the wool producing sheep bar or the bus. It roars. The jam bites costly. I look behind me. I look forward. Look behind me, look forward, look behind me, look forward, look behind me. I am the fleshly fucking protein angel of history. To calm, to wait, to die, to cry, to bite, to sigh, to dry, to fry. It started years ago, but you forgot to pay attention, you skin poor. Will it help if I cut off my hands? Hands, hands, I cut off my hands. Stupid necessary hands. Is this the West Germany? Across the board. Our agreement was reasonable. I am told I am out of breath. Then swallow. 
Horst Seehofer, my prime dentist, takes it for consent, which makes me think I have consented. So he takes my consenting to his thinking that I have consented to confirm his assumption of my consent. So I take his consenting to my consenting to his thinking that I have consented as my consent. So I ask to do it myself. So they say they'll do it for me. So they mean I leave this shitty world. So now I am the poster boy where it comes to the free willy. <laughs> Should one commit suicide with a view to nothing but Arbeit ahead? The choice I have is strictly between A, marrying Donald Trump, or B, marrying Donald Trump. <laughs> if I decide for A, decide to marry Donald Trump, it will be a decision against B, against marrying Donald Trump. <laughs> if I decide for B, decide to marry Donald Trump, however, then this will mean not A, that is, I won't marry Donald Trump. <laughs> I decide, yes, A. I decide for A, I will marry Donald Trump, hence decide against B, I will not marry Donald Trump. The consequences of A, marrying Donald Trump, are, quote, life, unquote. <laughs> the consequences of not B, not marrying Donald Trump, will be grave. This decision is to be my grave, hey, hey. I know that, see? We knew now what to do. Be more than him, quite skeletal cellular wrecks. Sprout, we shout, to the light, and grew, and grew, 50 meters past clouds. Limited editions, moist, fenced, accumulative, small bone data sets. Then reached average body length stretch, 149.597 million kilometers. Head clear, lies sprawled across the total universe. We booze up, hot juice. And he? Oh, pity him. Compare of minuscule size. He tears out beautiful blonde hair, expresses pain deeply felt. And then, calls girls, I never meant it like that. Ha 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 ha! Get ready. <coughs> the future. Set future probabilities in terms of current probabilities. <coughs> That's all. Try verification code. Rang the pollsters, the posters, ascertained the minimum was a thousand. Universe reliability methods, none picked up. They had turned. Worried the ringing signal of creditors. Tried the crack in the wall. No. Put down the phone, looked up spotted family drone, turn leg open, and smelt. The future. Ha! If I do have a child, at whatever point, may it emerge nothing like me, nothing like any of us. Ha! Fuck! Beyond what Frankenstein his imitations, pa! Oh yes! Make it monstrous. No resemblance in skin, eyes, ears, face, no. No skin, no eyes, no ears, no face, no flesh, they won't. The next one is a translation of a poem by Goethe. <laughs> May song. How beautiful shines to me the nature. <laughs> how the sun glows, how the mead smiles. Blossoms penetrate from each branch and a thousand voices out of the shrubbery. And joy, and joy from each breast. O earth, O sun, O joy, O lust, O love, O love. As golden, as beautiful as the morning clouds on those heights, you bless gloriously the fresh field, the blossoms steam, the bountiful world. O oh girl, girl, how I love you. Your eyes gaze, how you love me. This is the way the lark loves. Song and air and morning flowers, the smell of heaven. How much I love you, my blood warmed by you, for me a youth, and joy and courage for new songs and dances. May you be happy eternally, mm -hmm. as long as you love me. Es lebe der König nicht, long live the king not. <laughs> 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 <laughs 
weight is a feminist tissue. Goethe and May sitting in the street. K I S S I N free. First comes love, comes marriage, comes border control, and your mum is all saying. Theresa May is not a cunt. Theresa May is not a cunt. Theresa May is not a cunt. Theresa May is a well-manned process which administrates to maintain all aspects of the total motion sensor death pledge. I can't describe how hard I want her dead. Not biology dead, being just hardcore fiction, but the death of the office her body is. Policing helpers helpers. In a public toilet, I, three and more dimensions, they, stalled when hearing round the Cuban clock the kettle cavalry. Shadows armed appeared. Mounted Baden-Württembergians bubbling. Who speak? We, the ultra-vigilant and self-proclaimed and self-proclaimed familiar core. And choir and confidants of biology and rightful trust control a lickable genital stew but scared of scum and as we volunteer you will be a corpse we volunteer this info on and on we're the hyperextended fingers of the law this is our drumbeat galloping swimmingly hitting galloping swimmingly surrounding the toilet st stall that passports booth <coughs> Preview of what happens next. Those stuck inside the cubicles seem to dissolve. The Baden-Württembergians are pleased with their efforts, retreat to the woods to celebrate, light a campfire, feel nearly jocund. This turns out to be a grave mistake, for in the meantime the puddle of the bent assumes monstrous shapes, speed bursts, millions from mouths. Deutschland? Abgeschafft. Jawohl. Germany abolished, yes. <laughs> Ehe für alle. Oi, congratulations. Back then, when we were still alive, like now, on this soap bubble, bleached soap bubble, bleached crumbling soap bubble, bleached crumbling cracking soap bubble, when we were floating separate on sharp silver miniature discs in this hell, <laughs> and were nearing despairing, when we found ourselves on these shiny silvery floating discs, which featured various features, back then, when we were violent witnesses, and when we were always out in the open spinning exhibit pieces and things, back then, the man with the axe, he called himself Boss, and we too called him Boss, who spoke often of life and sighed, moved to tears by his own words, by biolife and its laws, back then, when that boss routinely cracked open our skulls like nuts, took out the worms, pulled them tight across the universal arc, left them for blazing immediate sun drying, <coughs> high quality fiber that formed the mini disc linen we were on, so that we were what we were on, spinning silver, and when in spite or because of these occurrences, the boss wouldn't stop speaking of life and nature, and wouldn't stop crying moved by his profundity, <laughs> Then we knew the nature of life had always been dubious, chainsaw massacring dubious. And if we were to be hunted like monsters, we had to turn monstrous first, turn monstrous first, be more law than the law, cut open our chests before he could, cut it open according to law, cut open our chests, lock our hearts together in plastic durable formable chains, glue together our lymph nodes. And did we only lock our hearts together? No, we glued also heart to liver, tenderly stroking one another, and cheeks to knees, and straw of hair to teeth. And dead animals were glued to thighs and tongues to the living. And if it wasn't you, there would be nothing. And wings to sour jelly chips and lick naked breasts to chairs. And diagrams of weather forecasts to why you sat on her, I like it. And health insurance cards to ears. And we deformed part shapes stood there, dangle. Bio liver. I eat solely local produce and organic. <coughs> Guillotine. <laughs> the rest of the body of proto-professional hunter sees own organic head. Oh, oh, head of proto-hunter sees rest of body of pro-pro-hunter. Quote, I never thought my head could ever de be divorced from its roots. I've only ever experienced immediacy. All my experiences have been real. 
all feelings, feelings. I wanted globally local con... I hated. I suffer. Hi, I hunt. Why me? Dead? No recycling even? Unquote. <laughs> Not even even. You hated foreign organs. Torso hands profoundly hold bringing head thought handy produce for thoughts. One skull, one garden. To sleep that barking. Here's own continued barking, crying, melting in pity self puddle, fencing, flag. The future, in the shape of the dickhead identitarian movement's worst nightmare, soft. Find us the future, now all together, though never all one, soft. Never the same as the second before, fast valley, horizontal plane, brink, flowers, yes, no, yes, prostheses, soft. We touched hands or other body parts, depending on the body parts each of us had, and depending on where and how each of us wanted to be touched. Soft. Soft. Rainbow. Rainbows. Infection, giggling streams, multiply, varnish, glitter, meadow glitz, plus the admission of pain, cute, plus clouds, softly joy, mingling floss and rope, glistening hope, no fog, no root necessity, compatibility, aliens all. Even the sheep have auto unsheeped on sparkling, passive, <coughs> pleasantly, soft, plastic, plastic hands, plastic synth, plastic, no borders. Kitch this, so, wrong, let's continue this non-threatening song. There will be showers of stars as pieces of gold. All the girls lying on the street will be rich muscles, irrespective of where they have come from and whether they are gir girls or boys. Toilets for all, cosmic. Turn corner, toilets for all, no borders. Olympic Ode. Casta Semenya is the greatest 800 meter runner of the current era. May you keep going. I love you. <laughs> Neither to swallow, to life nor to death. Straight from the source, a speech from this quite cool young ID burger, whose ID is acceptable at border control, at the public bathroom fork, in the road path, whichever way it goes, of identitarian belief, shepherd whose number plates medieval, advocate empirically, 1871, spring, winter. This ID burger is sat in a shed on the cliff's edge, a cliff because of a predilection for profound abysmal thought, the head supported by a hand. <laughs> Live steam from the burger's many mouths fogs up the countryside's and middle, producing this retro countryside riddle. Quote, I'm sitting in our family shed. The future of the future is breaking up my head. I see the dust of it all and am appalled. I don't recognize that which we see. It's not all copies of me. The present may be lost for us, but we will make sure the future will be the pseudo, pseudo, pseudo past at last. Unquote. No! Even when in the century zone of we commuters on the commuter train to the future felt in our travels extremely extremist lonely, very lonely, super lonely, lonely to the point of wanting to drill our brains out of our heads, lonely like pixels of linen, lonely to the point of a shard in one's wrist. It was better to have every pixel of my life, so-called life, severed from every other pixel in or of my life, than to have enforced convergence of form, which means, yes, I do actively want my arm to lie in the puddle over there, to be with others, including all brothers, and my throat elsewhere across this winter's desert in the place where I work, to speak with other others, and my torso to be stretched apart, yes, I want that, to fall apart into parts, to hold limbs relaxed, hard. Sentence poem. No return. <coughs> Alien Five. A poem addressed exclusively to self-identifying anti-gender warriors. <coughs> 
because some thought this recurring so-called bathroom thing was just a theme and marginal too. I, manning the counter, wanted to add that it's not that, as in to try humbly to explain better by way of digression on my way among current constellations in the century zone of planetary disks, contortions, twisted infinity models inhabited by sponge lungs, which are sponges by virtue of the nitrogen oxide kind of exertion of force, that X that turns anybody who is subjected to it into a thing, force from the diesel burger's mouth emissions, which this is not an environmental theme, it's a social theme, and also it's not a theme, it's a concerted dinosaur robot killer shark machine, the counter. I make myself as bland as possibility. I have no personality. Where were we? Wandering through invisible foggy emissions. Emissions exactly as invisible as the highest hand of the market. Precisely. Hypervisible in their effects respectively on the bodies. Like the union of global basketball players has always maintained, we finally need a massive systematic dialectical medical study of the body and its comedies. The point being, in the very least, why didn't all the hard-working EU assholes and also all the super lazy EU assholes get to vote in the referendum? In the referendum, get to vote in the referendum with their assholes. And to return to the point of the shard, the center point, one of many center points of contemporary oh, public space, is the public toilet. <laughs> approaching the public toilet from the perspective of the sea, which is the only perspective from which it makes sense to approach the current situation, there are the booths, the forks in the way to be slalomed through by contestant gladiators. There's the flushing of bodies of people. There's the hygiene. There's fear. There are chemicals. There's stalling. The public toilet is the site that holds the physical universe together. That is, when you say, aren't there more important issues, poverty, infrastructure, then no. The public toilet is the central infrastructural constellation of this period. The brain scattering chainsaw, so that, by implication, if one of the possible scenarios for my future is to become an elderly German woman, which one is not born as, <laughs> then if I was on the way to the riverbank, and if I knew Jörg Sato was also going to be there, Jörg Sato being the head of a food bank in Essen, currently marching through 2018, allowing only passported Germans to eat at his food bank, arguing that many elderly women felt intimidated by strangers, which incoherently implies that the subgroup of strangers and the subgroup of elderly women are mutually exclusive. So if I had to go to the riverbank to get some money out, I just wanted Jörg Sato to know that if I knew he was going to be there, I, as an elderly German woman, would be so shy and intimidated, I would not be able to leave my house with confidence. I would rather <laughs> murder myself and leak and scream and scream and scream. reading um, and maybe we should go to the pub. Yeah, I mean, yeah. 